much our, our earlier little introduction. Um, I am here to support the six through 12, my perspectives. I will turn on my little closed captioning chat about that. Um, so you can see here just my contact information. Uh, you can get me anytime for any question at all at Donna.Koss at Savis.com. I also, like many of the people on the Savis One team, have a Cloud HQ link uh, so that you can schedule a longer 30-minute session for yourself or if you have a small group, same prep, uh, before school, after school, whatever you want to do, um, feel free to use that link. And then I do also on this slide have the link for the Padlet that Chris Peterson put together for all of us. You'll see my flyer there and um, this same contact information is on my flyer. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what we're going to be doing today. Um, I'm going to go over the things that I feel are most important for you out there in the world dealing with this distance learning um, how can you find resources quickly? So number one, I'm going to show you some of the things you can get to from the home page. Um, and then I want to show you your table of contents and the most important tools um, for this distance learning from there. Uh, and I'll be saving a little time at the end in case any questions come up in the chat. So let's get right to it. Um, when you get to your home page, you have several things that you can do from here that I think are going to be very beneficial for you. Um, there are actually it, probably four different ways that I can think of right now to search for resources. My favorite one, I'm just going to show it to you right off the bat. Um, and I'm, I'm going to kind of challenge you for the day to, to of all the things I'm going to show you, I hope that you can find at least three things that you will start using right away to help hopefully end some of your frustration when it comes to using my perspectives and finding resources. So this first one, um, I had a teacher a long time ago tell me that this was the big Q, uh, but that this is our search tool, um, a nice little magnifying glass that when you click on this, you're gonna be able to search for content. Um, I'll explain why this is my favorite one, and I'll show you that if you're on a different page besides the home page, it's going to look a little different. Um, but let's search for something rather general that all grade levels would need, and that would be poetry. Um, I think teachers are always looking for extra poetry. I know when I did my units, I always needed extra stuff than what was in my, my basil. Um, so when you click on anything in the search, the first thing you're going to see are all of the things related to poetry that are in our Savvis product. Now you'll see here that there are 474 results. Well, that's a lot to go through. Over here on the left, these are some ways to filter all of that information down so that you can get to what you need more precisely. Um, of course, if you like, you can go page by page and look at every single item that comes up. But if you're in eighth grade and you only want to see things that relate to eighth grade, you can click on the My Perspectives and you'll see now that dropped down to four pages of material. And now I only have 35 results. So number one, that's a great way to start searching. Why I like using this search tool from the home page is because this is where you're going to see results from Mosaic by ACT. When you click on that black bar, you are now going to be able to search through this digital learning library powered by Mosaic. Um, these are going to be teacher vetted resources. Um, some things are teacher created. Some things you're going to see um, as I scroll through uh, the nature of writing. Mr. Buff has quite a few things here for poetry. Um, but again, I've got 11 pages of items related to poetry of a thousand results. That is also a lot to go through. If you are looking for something in particular, you can filter down along the side. 
I'm going to go back. How, how do I get back? Okay, easy, easy, easy. Anytime you want to get back to your home screen, you simply click on the Savvis Realize icon in the upper left corner. And now I'm back to my home page. The second way that I think is an easy search tool for you is just by clicking on browse. And then I like all the way here, you're gonna see all of your books on this browse. You normally pick your grade level, but I want you to click on browse all content. And why I like this way to search for information is because this gives you the opportunity to help you differentiate for your students. Um, by selecting the different toggles, if I'm in eighth grade and I know I have some students who are working a little below level or a little above level, I can simply click the toggles for the other programs and then I can enter my keyword. Oops. And when I hit search, now I'm only going to see things for those grade levels. So you'll notice some of these same things came up when I searched the other way. This is just a second way to search. I want to get back to my home screen. And the next thing I wanted to talk about, um, if you didn't notice, you know, you've got these uh, words up at the top there. They match the same colors as the circles and the rectangles. You can click on any of those to get where you want to go. I wanted to talk about, you know, classes and data are your next two tabs. Data really isn't much to show you until you start assigning, but I really do want to show you something useful in the classes. And that is this discussion board. Um, another really easy thing that you could start doing with your students tomorrow. You simply go uh, after you click classes, you see that discuss, you click on it and you're brought to this page. Um, it doesn't look like you have anything. You can create a prompt, or if you have already made one, you would click on my prompts. But what happens when you hit create a prompt? <clears throat> this window comes up, and you have some things to do here. Number one, you want to put in your title, whatever that may be, the title of your prompt. Oh, I can't spell today. Um, and then you have the prompt text box. And this is where you put the body of your text. This is where you can put additional directions. This is where you may want to tell your students that they have to respond to at least two other students, that you want them to use academic vocabulary and proper grammar in their answers to try to get them out of that texting habit. And then you have these colors. So you could have up to five discussions going at once and it would be easy to just pick a different color um, and that would uh, be a, a easier way for the students to figure out which discussion they want to participate in if you have more than one going at a time. When you're done, you just click Save Prompt. And now you'll see that I did have another prompt and you can see that I now have two. So when you have another prompt, let me go back here. When you come to this screen normally after you click discuss and you just go to my prompts, they're always going to be right here. You can always go back and edit your prompt and this is where you would assign it. You decide it's not a prompt that you want to use again, you could remove it. But anything that you create is going to stick for the, as many years as you have this product. So one last thing to show you um, from the home page is this question mark. Um, I can't go over everything. Um, of course, I want to answer whatever questions you have, but there is a way for you to get a little training on your own, and that is by clicking right here on program training. I have it open already, so in case I got that uh, slow delay, this is my status training. Um, there are some excellent, excellent tutorials on this site. If you're looking specifically for my perspectives, um, note that there is no space when you want to find my perspectives. Just type it in the box <clears throat> and then choose my perspectives. And what you'll get here are all of the tutorials that go along with the program to help you out. Um, I recommend scrolling to the bottom and click on view all training. And you now have access to so many things to help you out if you're looking um, to dive in a little more and you can't wait until the next session. All right, I'm gonna go back 
And now I'm going to pick a program. And I want to talk to you about what you have on your uh, table of contents and show you some of the things that I think you're going to need right away to start using with your students. Number one, I don't like this. My brain does not operate this way. I don't like to have to go across and down. I like to just have a list. So right here, you can change the look and feel of your table of contents. I can go from thumbnail view, which is how it always starts, and change it to list view. And my brain likes this much better. The next way that you can kind of uh, make this table of contents suit your needs is by clicking on this rearrange tab on the right. Notice my cursor changed to that multi-directional arrow. And now it's a simple click and drag. Once you have mastered what the Google integration looks like, you could move this to the bottom so that you don't have to look at it anymore. Um, I know I would want my student and my teacher edition to be closer to the top. So you simply click and drag, place things where you want, and when you're done, you would click save. The other thing to mention here, you'll notice that it says hide on a lot of these. What you do to your table of contents will also happen to the student's table of contents. So if there's ever something that you don't want them to see, all you would have to do is click hide and that will no longer show up on theirs. I'm not gonna mess with my table of contents right now, um, but you would just click save. Um, and you can always go back to the original by clicking right here where it says view original. <clears throat> So where do you need to spend most of your time? Right here with your teacher's edition, your student edition, and your unit resources. This is where you get to your e-text. Now I know it says e-text here above the black line, but this is not where you wanna go for my perspectives. You wanna click here. Today I wanna show you the student edition, which is very similar to the teacher edition. It's gonna prompt you to open it in a new window. And I opened mine earlier so that again, if there were internet problems, it wouldn't slow us down. It's always gonna land on the first page of the first unit. So how do you navigate from here? In the upper right corner, you see this menu button. By clicking on menu, you open up these areas where you can quickly go. So table of contents, um, well, that's where we're gonna look. But you can also bookmark your pages. You'll notice this little flag here uh, with the plus sign. By clicking on that, you and the students can bookmark a page. Um, once you start using annotations and highlights, you can look at them here all in one place. Once you start typing into your notebook, again, you could just go straight to your notebook to see what you need. And then of course we have a glossary. Let's take a look at this table of contents though. Notice that unit one rites of passage is highlighted. That's because this is the page that we're on. So if I wanna to go to unit two, I can just close that to get it out of the way, click on unit two and it's gonna send me directly there. Much easier than attempting to use these back and next buttons or to, if you know exactly the page that you want. I just have always found using this kind of hot linked menu is the easiest way to get around. So I wanted to show you a text selection from small group learning. Again, I can just click on that and all now the text selections that are here are named. And I wanna to go to this acceptance speech for the Nobel Peace Prize. Now, if you're using this on your own, this may not be distracting, um, but someday we're gonna get back in the classroom. And if you wanted to display this, you probably want, you want the screen to be as much of the text as possible. So there's a couple things you would need to do. Number one, you would click on the close button here, not once, but twice. And you'll see now it filled my screen. And then I have this picture here, which of course you wanna introduce this to the students. You can click here to get background on the author. Um, and background on the selection. Um, and if you need to look at your standards and how this is related, you can just simply click on any of these. <clears throat> but once you do that, you want it out of the way. 
you'll notice here it says hide. Once you click on hide, that picture goes away. If I ever want it back, it has changed to show. But now my text fills the screen much better. Um, as you're reading, you'll notice that there are um, bolded words that are blue and underlined. These, these are our vocabulary words. When you click on them, you automatically see the definition and I can actually change that to all of these different languages. So if I have a student who needs it in Russian or if you assign this to students and they need it themselves, they can easily read the definitions in their own language. In English, oh, let me go back. You can actually have it read. Another uh, play button you may have noticed right here at the top. This is the audio for this text. I don't want to play too much in case the sound isn't working for you very well. Um, but this is great for either synchronous or asynchronous learning. Um, if you want the students to have the ability to have it read, uh, especially some of your struggling readers, um, they've got that audio support built right in and they can use this toggle to adjust the speed. Um, other things they can do with their e-text, and, and keep in mind, I'm on as a teacher right now. This is your copy of the student edition. Uh, so if you're going to use this as a teaching tool, you can mark the text just like the students can. It's very easy with a click and a drag. When you let go, you have the opportunity to use four different highlight colors and these three different shapes. So if you come up with a system of using for guided reading um, or close reading, uh, all vocabulary is green underlined, it's very easy to set that up with your students and they should use that repeatedly throughout their e-text. They also have a chance to type an annotation here. Um, maybe you're using this for uh, collecting evidence. I can just say this is the answer to whatever question. It is going to automatically save. They can click save just to be sure. And then when they click off it, this is going to stay here. If they ever want to edit, they click on that little post-it note that comes up and they can always change what they wrote in their annotation. So again, you as the teacher have the ability to mark up your text as well. And when we get back into the classroom, if you want to use this with your distance learning, you can show them where maybe they should have highlighted or they should have found their evidence. The other thing to quickly show you here, if you do decide to um, assign e-text, the students may be confused as to, well, where am I supposed to be typing? All of their work is here on the right under making meaning, language development, and effective expression. Now, almost every text is gonna have all three areas, but depending on what you're looking at, you may not have all three. Um, especially if you assign a, a, an image gallery or something like that. But all they have to do is open these areas up um, and they can, if you assign the conventions activity, they click on it. <clears throat> they can open this activity up. They can type right in it. Everything they do is going to stay. Um, here's an example of what their notebook looks like. They would type right into this notebook text box and that is going to stay. Uh, if you assign this, you will be able to see what they do to their e-text. And I'll save that for another upcoming session. Um, I kind of want some feedback from you to see what you are most interested in using. But those are kind of the highlights of, of the e-text. Um, so let's move back over to um, the next thing I want to show you, your unit resources. Now notice, um, that, again, that e-text opened in a separate tab. So I can always just go back and forth. But when I go back to my Savas account, you know, I'm, I'm left on this page where I had to open the new window. When you're navigating through Savas Realize, you always want to use these back buttons that are within the program. So I want to click on this exit button, not my browser's back button. Sometimes when you click on the browser back button, it may kick you out of the program completely and you have to log back in. So scrolling down, unit resources. Keep talking about assigning. 
this is where you do your assigning. So again, I'm in the grade eight program. I can see here, these are the different units in grade eight. Um, a very useful tile is this program level resources. <clears throat> this is filled with downloadable documents that are generic. So you can use them with anything. So if you're looking for a first review, a close review guide, um, and a first read guide, but you're reading something different, something outside of status, that's fine. You have all of these generic tools right here in your program level resources. But what does it look like in a unit? So I'm going to go to the Holocaust because that's where I went in the e-text. And here's what things look like in my unit. It goes through the same things you saw when I went on that menu and I had my whole group, I had my small group, and I had my independent learning. And by clicking on all of those, I opened up the different texts. Here, they're just all in a list. So I had gone to that acceptance speech for the Nobel Peace Prize. Anytime you see this arrow, it means there's more to open. So when you click on that tile, now I get into things that are directly related to this particular piece of text. If I were to assign the e-text, I want this top one. And one of the ways you know it's e-text is you see this icon of this little book here. Um, if I were to click on this right now, it's gonna send me to just this text. It's gonna look like I'm in the e-text, but I'm not. So one way you know that is when you open the menu, notice how this is very different than the menu I looked at before. This is going to keep the students only on this text. They can't go too far. They can't go to the other places in the text. It keeps them focused on the assignment that you want them in. Again, I click the exit button back. <clears throat> If you didn't know that we had this, almost every single text has accessible level text for all of our fiction and nonfiction informational text. So in a fiction text, it's going to have chunks of authentic text, author written text, and it's going to have bits of summarized text. And you're going to be able to use this accessible level text and still um, have the students answer the same questions that would be if they had written, or, I'm sorry, read the entire text. When it comes to informational text, some of the um, paragraphs are summarized. Um, the lexile level has been lowered a bit. Some of the vocabulary has been changed, but they will still get the same information um, from the acceptable level text. So for those students who struggle a little bit and you're worried about them having to do all this work on their own at home, um, you may want to, instead of assigning the e-text, you may want to assign them the accessible level text. The other thing that we have, which is awesome for distance learning, is we have audio summaries. Um, these audio summaries, uh, maybe you did it with them, but you wanna ensure that they got the gist of it. Maybe you noticed they weren't participating well on the, on the call that you had with them. Um, this is going to give them that audio summary and it is a click away to get it in Spanish. So it's a really nice tool for remote learning. Now you may have noticed that there is this other little symbol of a book in a house. That is the symbol for remote learning. All of these other things go with this text, but not as easy to do. It doesn't mean you can't, but not as easy to do with remote learning. A, a one way that you can kind of minimize what are the best things to use is to click on this toggle that says show distance learning resources. And you'll notice now I only have those three items. If I go back to my table of contents, even my table of contents has been reduced. So that is also gonna make your life easier. But let's take a look at actual, oh, I apologize. I clicked the wrong place. Let's take a look at what does assigning really look like. So if I go to that acceptance speech and I do want to assign, 
you've got a couple of things. I can assign this one item. I can click on these boxes and I can give them the full text and the audio. I can click over here. Oh, if I deselect them, I can just easily assign all. It's totally up to you. And no matter what you do, this same box is gonna come up. You would pick your start date. I know you guys give them a full week, Monday to Monday to get their work done. You could set start and end times. And this is gonna help you as a teacher know if they turn something in late, um, if it's past, a minute past the time that you set here, it's going to come in with a red exclamation point saying that it was past due. You can type your instructions and then you simply start typing the name of your class. Now you notice when I did that, I saw, oh, I see student names. You could also assign it to individual students by just clicking on their name. If you make a mistake, just click off of it. Very easy to assign. Now, the other thing to highlight here, this is my promo for next week, add to playlist. You can pick out all of the things that you want and make your own playlist, just like you can do with Spotify. And we're gonna spend the next half an hour um, doing just that, showing you how to create and add things to your playlists. So I hope you'll join me next week. Um, let's see what else I have. I can quickly go. So these are the next sessions that are coming up. Uh, January 13th, the digital learning with playlists. And then January 27th, uh, I am skipping a week in between to let some of our other presenters be able to split by grade bands like I'm going, going to be doing. Um, that's gonna be make it your own way. And that's where I'm gonna show you how to customize um, assessments and those PDFs. Um, and I'm gonna break things into grade bands of six to eight and nine to 12 on both of these upcoming sessions, um, six to eight if you'll join me from 10.30 to 11, and then nine to 12 from 11 to 11.30. So again, this is my contact information. If you have any questions between now and then, you have any suggestions or something you need help with that I could make, I, I haven't gone into February with my sessions. Um, I'm willing to get feedback from you and let that drive what I decide to do.